all that stuff flashed in my mind in a few seconds and I'm thinking, what is going on? And at any second, that thing could have turned very differently where I could have been killed. And for what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For what? Uh, DWB, driving while black, <laughs> you know? I think that it's been weird to experience two camps of people in 2020, people who are really focused on the negative and in a fear state and like constantly wanting everyone else to be scared and people who see this year as a year of huge opportunity for changing the world. I think 2020 has been in some ways a year of um, exposure. <laughs> um, it's been a, of of our country and the way that things are. It's, it's laid bare some of the inequities and the brokenness um, in, in our systems. And I think 2021 and beyond is gonna be about reckoning. My name is Alex Rance, and I'm the creator of 2020 Unmasked. Thanks for watching. Like you, towards the end of 2020, I realized what a traumatic year it had been. I am also a storyteller, and I believe in the healing power of stories. So I set out to collect the stories of 2020, the good, the bad, the painful, and the enlightening. This is the result. These are real people, and these are their stories. Yeah, I guess uh, something that I did in 2020 was say, what can I offer to the world? Um, we're home, can't go anywhere. So right in the beginning, I said, well, I'm working out all the time anyway. Uh, and gyms are closed. What can I give back? How can I give back? So I got on to Facebook um, 9.15 every morning for 16 weeks, Monday through Friday. And I did like a 25 minute free Facebook live workout. And I did it partly for me to be accountable and to just keep working out. But also I felt that by giving that to whoever needed it, it was a way to just give back during this time. And it's amazing still months and months later, cause I did it for 16 weeks and I stopped and I, I, I wasn't doing it over the summer or the fall or even now. I still get messages from people saying like, I go back to your Facebook workouts and I love them and um, I wish you would continue doing them, but if you're not going to, I'll just go back to your Facebook page. And it feels good to know that I gave something back during this time. I'm hopeful and always hopeful that, you know, if I reach one person with a positive message, I mean, much like in, in you know, the interview I did uh, for Northeast Wisconsin Volunteer of the Year, I mean, you just, you just want to reach people. You just want to you know, obviously right now we're divided in a lot of ways, but I'm cliche enough to believe that there's more that unites us with, you know, for want of a better cliche. And I just, um, when I look back at, you know, this year and frankly, every year it's, it's again, without being too Pollyanna that, you know, I, I'm just always uh, much more focused on the things that bring us together and I hope, and, and I actually believe that I, I impart that on others. You know, the biggest takeaway for me is, you know, the two things. Uh, I mean, I don't care if it's a business meeting, if it's a routine, again, routine transaction in a community store. Um, thank you is really important. And, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk today. Just walking through some of these things, I'm sure it shows. I mean, even the, through the screen that it does bring a big smile on my face. I mean, thinking about, um, some of the great highlights from last year and some of the great highlights from life. And, you know, that's, I, I'm just hopeless when it comes to that in a good way that that will always be my takeaway. It's just the way I look at the world and I, and I hope I always will. Well, I think there's the 2020 thing, the, the whole COVID thing. And then there's the whole, you know, the whole black lives matter and the whole, the police and the rioting and the racism and the, the Nazis, the white supremacists, there's all that. I didn't touch on that 
probably because I'm in my little secure bubble here. But that certainly was huge. You know, it's the reminder of like back and I grew up, you know, so lived through the 70s, you know, and things that were happening then and like seeing it coming around, feeling on some level like, wow, certainly this much must have changed. Hasn't it changed? And then to be living in it now and go, shit, it hasn't changed that much. In fact, it's probably worse because 30 years later, we should be, we should be better. We should be doing better and we haven't. So that has been, there's COVID and that for me though. So COVID and then that, that there are people that are living in my own country who are being, you know, murdered, uh, kept under the thumb um, and um, what we've done, what we've done. Um, not really. I, I guess like my only thing is I'm unsure sometimes if there's a better way that I could be helping people who are really, truly struggling. And I, I want to be able to, and I, I feel like what so many people are going through is stuff that I've been through, like my own prison that I created for so many years is now something that so many people are going through. And I just kind of don't really know if there's a way I could be helping more. Um, I try to let everybody I know personally, like, Hey, I'm an ear. I I'm so here to listen, you know? Um, but sometimes I feel like it's not enough. Like, I don't know. So that, that's just kind of where I'm at. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I think 2020 has been in some ways a year of um, exposure. <laughs> um, it's been a, of, of our country and the way that things are. Um, it's, it's laid bare some of the inequities and the brokenness um, in, in our systems. And I think 2021 and beyond is going to be about reckoning. Um, and we're in that, you know, we're in that now. Um, and, and, you know, what happened um, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd is also, you know, exposure and reckoning. And, um, and I, I, I think we're, we've got a lot to reckon with. And we have a lot to reconcile as a as a country and as a community, and so that that's going to be our work. That's going to be our work as a community moving forward is to to reckon with with what's been exposed, you know. And and um, it's not to say it's all been bad. I think there've been some really wonderful things that have happened and come to light uh, in this strange year we've been we've been in. Um, but there's also a lot, there's a lot to reckon with and there's a lot of work for us to do. And um, it's at the local level, but it's at every level of government, certainly in this country. Um, as uh, scary as 2020 was and um, still continue, and I mean, as the pandemic still continues to be, um, I am left with uh, gratitude for how, how this time has passed for me personally, but also for the people around me and, and in my life. Um, I'm knocking on wood right now, but um, I have not, it, it could have been so much more devastating in my inner circle of people that, you know, of people that I happen to know, it could have been much more devastating than it is. But um, there are a lot of people in my life who've been um, taking it seriously. And so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to still be employed at a time where an entire industry is basically out of work. Um, I'm grateful for uh, the time spent uh, the time spent on personal growth and making, you know, and making these decisions about uh, how I take up space and exist in the world. Um, I'm let, I had more time. 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 
that I normally wouldn't wouldn't have had in uh, a in an industry that I love so much and that took so much time uh, away from me that I did not know that I needed. Not to say that it was like it was terrible. I mean, I was doing good things and I was making art, but I had more time for other things. And uh, so that development, uh, you know, that development took me really, really far. And uh, you know, I think we're all entirely different people than we thought we were going to be uh, at the beginning of 2020. Well, I definitely don't like the idea that people put forward a lot that 2020 was a great year because they had more time with their family or more time to do this or that. Um, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. I, I get it. I get it when people say that. But I think we need to acknowledge the resilience and the caring for us to look at new strengths that we had during this time and the ability to for us to to make connections maybe with our own family better than we were before but i hope everyone remembers 2020 as just a really horrible year because to sugarcoat and that it was anything less than terrible and i think just like uh we, we, the expression you have to acknowledge the bad parts of our history so you don't repeat them. I think 2020 and now 2021 as the pandemic continues, we need to we need to do that. We need to acknowledge how terrible this was so so it doesn't repeat itself to the extent that it has. I'll give you an example. Just recently on November 11th, I had pulled a 12 hour shift you know, doing this bathroom remodel and uh, I was making my way home, a 12 hour shift, I was tired. My cousin wanted me to come by and light the pilot to a heater. I light the pilot to, my, to a heater. I get, I mean, I'm on my way coming to her house and I'm rushing, I'm driving kind of fast and um, the sheriff pulls me over. So I'm almost at her house. There's no parking on the street. So I just pulled into the driveway and um, he asked me, do you, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, no, I don't. He said, you were going kind of fast when you hit the corner. I said, okay. He asked me for my license. I gave it to him. He went, he said, I'm just going to run a check. Everything is probably going to be fine. And we'll just, you know, go from there. Next thing I know, somebody snatches over my passenger door. It was his partner. And, and I look and, and it caught me off guard. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? He said, I could do what I want. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. I said, no, you can't. He said, I could snatch you out of this car if I wanted to. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. No. And we kind of went back and forth. I'm like, he said, and then he said, there's some, some law that allows him to do that. I said, well, I'm going to have to look that up because I don't know that. He said, you could have a gun. I don't know. I don't want to get shot. I said, really? You know, so anyway, then he's trying to make small talk. I'm sitting there, you know, just sitting there patiently waiting. My cousin came by. She, she, was, over, she was on the front porch because she, she saw the whole thing. She saw, heard the interchange, ex exchange we had. And she said, Mark, you okay? I said, yeah. And she said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, okay. And then she told her son to go in the house to get her video camera. And that's what he did. You know, so I'm sure neighbors were coming out to see the lights flashing or whatever. So the officer who actually pulled me over, he came back and he said, you know, everything is good, you know, with your uh, license, Mr. Jones, just, uh, just kind of watch your speed. And he said, your, your license plate lights, the lights that illuminate your plate in the back are out. I said, I didn't know that. He said, just get it fixed. I said, I will, thank you. He let me go. I looked back, the other guy was already gone. You know, I went in the house, told my neighbor about it. I mean, my sister, my cousin about it. And I talked to my neighbors and different people. And right now, I, I went, the next day I went to the sheriff's station and filed a complaint, you know? And um, they have that on file. Right now, this case is still pending. I'm waiting to hear the, the, um, the outcome of me filing this complaint. So, all everything that flashed in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, when this guy just snatched my door open, one, I'm thinking, you can't do that. That's illegal. Two, you're invading my private space. I'm thinking, you know, I, I saw this George Floyd and, and the guy in Georgia who was killed by the, the father and his son. And I'm looking at all that. All that stuff flashed in my mind in those few seconds. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And at any second, that thing could have turned very differently where I could have been killed. And for what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For what? Uh, DWB driving while black. 
you know, tie into the Holocaust for me is that I do have a Jewish faith and, and my particular flavor of Judaism is founded on social justice. And that whole business about being chosen isn't that we're God's little lap dogs. It's that we are chosen to be the change the world needs to be. And I think that's a big part of why for me, there wasn't a fear factor here. There was simply a factor of making the best choice for the greater good. And I was deeply disappointed in people in my sphere who did not seem to be making that choice. And then I had to grapple with that whole issue of judgment. Well, is it Am I really doing the right thing if I'm judging people who come to a different conclusion than I do? I guess overall, I would just say it's just been a life-changing year. It's brought like a lot of perspective. It's made me question so much about our society and how it functions and what's important. And I, I hope that as a collective, we're able to make changes. I, I'm not 100% faithful about that, but I hope that there'll be some changes about how we choose to function as a society. I think that it's been weird to experience two camps of people in 2020, people who are really focused on the negative and in a fear state and like constantly wanting everyone else to be scared and people who see this year as a year of huge opportunity for changing the world. Mm -hmm. And most of the people I know who saw it as a big opportunity had incredible years, had years that transformed their whole lives. And it's a weird thing because it's like scary to share good news during this time. Like you feel guilty sharing good news when a lot of the news you're seeing is about people being sick and dying. That being said, I also think that this is a year that brought to the surface anyone's beliefs about fear and about death. And people had to grapple with what they think about death in a way that they maybe have never thought about it before. And I actually think that there's a benefit to that on a human global scale. And hopefully we will start to understand that the way that we view death and how we process it needs to be revisited. Um, because I don't think that dying alone in the hospital room without access to any of your relatives is what I would call a good death. Um, and I think that we really need to think about what is the purpose of the end of our life and how do we treat it with respect and honor. Um, and I think a lot more people are thinking about that than ever would a be able to talk about it on like a, a quotidian <laughs> colloquial way. Um, and I think that actually being able to talk about big, deep things, these big questions that you're asking, like being able to talk about them and, not, and it not being weird is a strange gift of our, of this time. Mm -hmm.